Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to the setup video of the Free API. FreeAPI.app is a really powerful open source project which can help you to learn about API whether you are a front-end developer, mobile developer or a back-end developer. There is something for everyone here. There are multiple ways how you can set up this uh, entire project on your local system or on DigitalOcean. I'll be separating them out into smaller chunks of video so that whatever is your specific need, you can just watch that video. This video is specifically for just going through with absolute basics. Somebody who knows just the basics of JavaScript can make this project up and running. You don't need any higher end knowledge or something. I don't expect you to have Docker or anything for this uh, particular video or the project. Although it is supported by, there is a separate video for that. In this video, let's go with the absolute basic walkthrough and everything will be walked through, nothing will be skipped, you will be able to do it along with me. So first, let me just uh, share my screen here. This is the homepage of our freeapi.app. Obviously, it will be changing in the future as well. This is the first kind of a basic boilerplate that I've placed, but you'll find a big project button which says get the code access here. You can also go get the code access from my GitHub as well, but there will obviously be a link here. Uh, this will change. This will 100% change in the future, but you'll find this button anyway, somewhere here. Just click on this. This will take you onto the GitHub. This is where the entire project is being placed and is being maintained. So there's everything up here. And what we're going to see is inside this main, there is this dev and you shouldn't be watching the dev branch. This is where we do our push. What you need to do is just go onto the main. By default, it will be on main. Make sure it is always there. Click on the code and there you'll see either the git clone command, you can use that or just get this, or we are going to go ahead and get the download zip. So this is, I've already clicked. This has downloaded a zip file into my system and we'll be using this one here. Uh, for this, let me go ahead and get my VS code up and running and then just go ahead and drag and drop this API main app file. That's all you have to do. The step one is to simply go ahead and install the dependencies of it. So npm i or install, that's the command. And the project is as of now dependent on only a few of the dependencies. For example, you will be able to see like express, .env, course, uh, compression and all of that, whatever is required for this one. As we will be going forward into the project, obviously we'll be having much more dependencies as we make this project much more complex. It is fairly complex as of now. All the source code you can see into the source directory and everything. Now, here is a couple of things before you go ahead and run this project by running the command which we have mentioned here, npm run start. So this is the command which runs it, but don't run it as of now, you won't be able to run it. We have also given you this .env.sample file. Just go ahead and select everything from it, copy it, close it. Then at the root of the directory, just create a new, uh, direct, new file. And the easiest way to do it is just simply double click in the here in the free space and the new file will be created, .env. Yes, exactly that. You have to make it .env. Once you place it there, just go ahead and paste everything that we have copied from the .env sample file. Once you have done that, just go ahead and save this. Now there are multiple portions of this environment variable file. For example, you want to enable the GitHub uh, login, then you have to add this one. There will be separate video for that. Uh, for example, you want to enable the Razor Pay keys. There is a separate environment uh, video for that. PayPal, separate video. Uh, similarly, uh, the mail, separate video. The first and the most basic one is here. This is what we need to enable. Uh, rest of the things, you can keep it as it is. If you know what you're doing, you can change that. But here is the most important thing, which is the Mongo URI. It requires a MongoDB to actually make it up and running. Either you have installed it, but I'm pretty sure most of you don't know about it much. So you don't have to worry, we'll go on to Google and simply go ahead and find MongoDB Atlas. So MongoDB Atlas. This is an online version of MongoDB. I'll walk you through exactly how to set this up. Uh, it's not really a big deal. We will walk you through. There's a fresh installation setup that we'll be doing. Uh, you have to do try it for free. I have to do a sign in because I've already created an account, but it's a fresh account. So I'll just go ahead and click on Google and it will redirect me inside the MongoDB. And the way how I'll see it, exactly exactly that, how you will be seeing as well. So there are a couple of options here. You will be also seeing a build a database uh, big option here. So let's build a database using this big command. I'll be choosing the M0, which is a free tier version. Feel free to use paid one in case you want to go for that. Uh, provider AWS is fine. Whatever the reason you choose, that's also totally fine. I'll probably choose Mumbai, which is nearer to me, cluster zero. And then just click on the create. Uh, once we go ahead and click on this create, it will ask me that, hey, username, you don't have to worry, just click on create, whatever that is. We'll create our users and everything fresh and just finish and close. 
uh, go to the database. Uh, all the rules and everything that we have mentioned are set up, but don't worry at all. We'll be doing a couple of more things. I'll walk you through how that is being done. Uh, let's just wait for a couple of seconds or probably I can hit a refresh and that should be set up. That's usually much more faster than this. All right. So let's just wait for a couple of seconds till it loads and finish the setup process. All right, so now the database is set up. It's not all done. We need to do a couple of more access. In the security, just click on the network access first. And here you can see only my current IP address can access the database as you will be switching off your computer and on and probably router, it's, this will change. So we really want to edit that or you can just go ahead and delete this. We can create it fresh, add an IP address. That's totally up to you. Once I'll do that, I'll say allow access from anywhere. This will add an entry of 0.0.0.0 slash .0 .0 4 and uh, we'll just click on confirm and that's it. Now your database can be accessed from anywhere, even from your local host. Not ideal for production, but we really want to go this way. Uh, once you have done this, this probably shouldn't take that much of the time. I'll just hit a refresh. Uh, probably my internet is a little slow or something. Not my internet. <laughs> this is actually sometimes takes a uh, process. In the meantime, let's go ahead and click on database access. This is where you create a fresh user. Already this user is created, but I want to add my own a new user. So I'll just go ahead and say, hey, I want a free API. You can name this user whatever you like. And the password I'll say, free API 123, whatever the password you want. I'll just want the basic password. So I'll just go free API 123. Click on add a built-in role and click on up here, read write to any database. Yes, that's exactly what I want and click on add user. Once you click on that, that's it. The free API user is now being added. Let's check the network access. And it usually doesn't take this much of time, but probably we need to hit a refresh or just wait for a couple of time. Till the time it is all done, uh, it's not going to allow us to access the database from anywhere. Uh, but don't worry, we'll just see that. Now, just go up here. By the time we'll be done uh, doing another setup, it will be all done. Now, click on the database. And the next thing that we want to do is click on connect and click on compass. This will give you a URL. This is the exactly URL we want. So go ahead and click on copy. Now, let's go back to our code file. And where it says MongoDB equals, just go ahead and place it. Don't place it after the slash. That's the comment side of it. Just go ahead and paste it there. Make sure you change the username along with these uh, diamond brackets. So just go ahead and say free API as my user. And the password is free API123. And that's it. That should be a local setup, but there will be an error that you'll be getting that, hey, this should not be ended with the slash. So by the default, we don't expect you to slash. So go ahead and remove that. Or if you say something like free API or give the database name, that's fine. If you don't give it, we'll just create the database one for you with the name of free API, of course. Go ahead and save this. By the time this, we can now close this and the database should be connected if we get the access of it. Uh, it usually doesn't take this much of the time. Uh, let's see what is happening here. All right, so let's just confirm this. Or let's add one more IP address so that we can uh, just be sure 0.0.0 slash zero and let's just say which one gets added first and yeah this should be let's try to delete it sometimes this is an online database sometimes it create issues in the request and allow access from anywhere confirm it there we go sometimes it's usually instant but this time we got it all right let's go back this is now all done now we can just look for the command to run and the command is pretty simple you can check this into package.json as well npm run start is the command so let's go ahead and work with that so we'll be saying npm run start and just go with that once you get it up and running it's super easy now your documentation and entire project is running on the local host 8080 now, obviously, if you, this port is actually busy for you, just go ahead and change it from 8080 to 8000, 4000, 7000, whichever the port is free for you. Uh, just make sure whenever you make any change in the environment variable, you have to restart. Although the node mode is there, but make sure you still restart your project. I'll just click on this localhost 8080, and this is where directly you are interacted with the Swagger documentation. These are state-of-the-art documentation. You can just run everything and anything from here. For example, there are some default. If you click on this, uh, this at the very bottom, let me just go ahead and move this up. So this at the bottom actually gives you a health check. You can just click on the get request and click on try out and execute. This is going to give you a response code that, hey, everything was okay and everything got great. So these are interactive documentation. You can just try them out, learn from them, work through them and everything is all great. 
Uh, for example, if you want to work with the public APIs or the kitchen sink, I'll walk you through in the, a, a separate video that how the documentation and everything is uh, laid out functionally. So for example, you want to get a random user, just click on this get. This will show you what is the URL that you have to hit and how all these things are there. So slash public slash random user, this is the URL. Of course, after localhost, colon 8080 slash API slash v1 slash public slash random user. You can try them out with the Postman, with the Thunder Client, or with the Swagger documentation directly. Try this out, and let's go ahead and execute this. And once I execute, notice this is the URL where the request was sent. So just go ahead and you can copy this. I'll walk you through with a couple of ways. In the response body, you have got this response status code and the data uh, with all the values. And inside this further, there's a data which is an array which gives you all these random user with location and everything here. In case you want to go more and want to throw the web request via the Postman, Thunder Client, whatever that is, we can go ahead and have this. Paste it up here, localhost colon 8080 slash API slash v1 slash, then whatever the URL is, public, random user. And if there are parameters, that's great. That's If they are not, that's okay, fine as well. You can send the request and this is going to get you a response as a code. We can just see. This is our response code that all the data is available to us. Now, furthermore to this, let me go ahead and expand this. Uh, furthermore to this, uh, these are some of the public routes that you can go ahead and work with that. So public APIs is the one folder. You'll also see that there are to-do list, e-commerce, social media, as well as authentication section, which actually has all the users and all of that. We are giving you some of the dummy data as, as well so that you can just try out things directly. Public APIs don't need directly data. They have the data already injected with them. But if you want to play around with social media, e-commerce or authentication, you have to first populate. One more thing, you cannot populate directly the authentication. In order the authentication to work, you have to first populate either the e-commerce or social media. After that, it will work. So to-do list, uh, notice here, there is nothing inside here. If I go ahead and click on get to-dos, try it out and execute this. Uh, there is uh, no data inside this right now. So we have to populate this data. For that, we have actually injected seeders. Let me show you that, database seeding. Just click on this and look for what database you want to seed. As we grow further more in the apps, you'll find that uh, database for to-dos, e-commerce, social media, everything can be generated like that. So if I want to seed the to-do data, all I have to do is try it out, execute, or via the postman, I can just hit this route, slash API, uh, localhost, 8080, API, v1, seed, to-dos. So each database can be individually populated. Uh, once you actually go ahead and execute that, it will insert the to-dos successfully. We can see that these are being injected. Let's check out in this one as well, that whether the database, what the database is actually doing behind the scenes. So browse collections. And we'll take a couple of seconds. And now we can see that to-dos should be populated. And there we go. So all the to-dos are there. And now you can play with your own to-dos, even can insert more of your to-dos and all the data as well. Uh, similarly to this, you can right now see that e-commerce orders is nothing inside it, but you can go ahead and populate it with that as well. So everything is now available. Now you can play around with the to-dos or anything. Uh, make sure, let me show you one more thing. Once our, let's just say e-commerce data is populated. So try out execute. And once there is something inside the e-commerce database, this is actually a lot of population that is happening behind the scene. So once I go up here and I should be able to refresh this and you'll see there's so much going on into the e-commerce orders and everything. Once this is all done, then I can go ahead and execute the generate credential. So what this will do, it will populate a lot of models and generated users. So this is how the response value will come up. Uh, your role admins will be generated, a few admins, a few passwords will be generated, uh, roles, users, admins. So these admins and these users are common for social media, for the e-commerce app and a whole bunch of others. So just click on try it out and execute. And uh, very quickly, this is going to just generate some of the users for you as well. So now if I go ahead and refresh this, and this is going to refresh some of the database uh, users for you. So go ahead and click on users. And now the user database is generated. And this is commonly being used across variety of applications. Uh, users are common. Uh, users are common in e-commerce and social media as well. To-dos are directly accessible. For filtering, searching, all of the to-dos can be worked on that. So this is your very basic setup of how things can be done. As long as this is up and running, this project, uh, you will be able to access your database and all these packages and something. This is really a crazy big project. I'll probably take a separate video to explain you how this authentication kitchen sync, e-commerce and everything works on that. But this is really the basic, that's all. Just a couple of commands, setup of the database and that's it. 
Now your own API setup is ready to work on any marvelous project on React, Vue, React Native, Angular, Flutter, your Android app, iOS app, whatever you want. That's it for this one. Let's catch up in the next video.